Welcome to my Rayman 3 fan remake devlog series. I invite you to join me as I talk about my journey of learning Unreal Engine and programming. I will go over how I made this blank scene turn into this. Come on, I'm kidding. Hey, I like that outfit on you. When does it come off? I'll be showing the models I've made, C++ code, and blueprint code. Alright, let's dive in. Episode 4. I'm pretty excited about this one. Today I'm going to go over making the whole fairy council area, at least the environment part. Let's hop in. Alright, since we already have that main island that we made in the first episode, let's start this whole thing by making the other ones. I'll do a little turnaround. Here we have two rocks because these are basically the boulders that are underneath the wooden bridge. And then I put them into Unreal Engine the same way I did with the first island in the first episode. So I start with vertex painting and ZBrush and then just put the material that I made in the first episode. Next I decided to make the terrain that I'm standing on right now and the island's terrain that the tower is located on. So as always I imported the original mesh into ZBrush. I added some more triangles so I can smooth it out nicely and added some lumps here and there to kind of give it more of a terrainy feel. The same goes for the tower island in the middle. Okay I dropped the terrain into Unreal. Use the same principle of using vertex paint to determine where I want rocks and, and other stuff like that. As you can see, this is very smooth, very PS2 graphics right here. And to fix this, I would just, I would like to create some rocks and just start jamming them into these smooth walls, something like this. So let's start making some rocks. There are a couple rock shapes that repeat throughout the level, like these or these or these, or a long one like, like this one. So I'll basically do the same. For anyone interested, here are the brushes I usually use when sculpting stuff like rocks or wood. Clay buildup, clay tubes, trim dynamic, orb cracks, edge polish, mallet fast. The same goes for some old stylized metal, except I add in some dents using the standard brush. And so that's one, two, three, and four. And as always, we finish him off with some vertex painting. So I took one of those rocks and did the wall jamming. However, this intersection where the rock connects with the terrain is really ugly. So I scoured the YouTubes for some blending techniques and found out that Unreal Engine has this thing called Runtime Virtual Textures. And it basically solves my problem here. Here's a tutorial I use for anyone that also wants to implement this technique. All right, check out this magic. Runtime virtual textures off and now on. Cool. So here's what I got after placing some more rocks. I got some on the main island over there. Put some on the walls over here and near the water. 
and started laying out the rocks on the edges of the map and in the background. So while we're still on the topic of rocks, as the moon is just a background piece, all I did here was find one crater alpha online and just go crazy with it. To be honest, I didn't even make a material for the for these. They're purely white and the greenish tint comes just from a light source. Okay, now I'm thinking about moving on to the wood material. So for the models, I got some planks to build a bridge over here. I also need to make these wooden poles that have this kind of golden thread on it. And these barricades are also going to be made of the same planks, so this is not an additional model. Yeah, so I guess it's just wooden planks and wooden poles. In every wooden plank, I made the backside without the swirlies to give me a little more control when level building where I want the swirlies and where I don't want them. And here's the wooden pole. I did, however, do the final touches in Blender. I wanted to add these loose threads sticking out and doing that is just easier for me in Blender. For the table texture, I decided to go for this kind of desaturated smooth wood grain. It seems to me to most closely resemble what was intended in the original game. So here in Unreal, wood uses the exact same material setup as the rocks. It just has a different texture set put in. For the golden thread that's on the wooden poles, since it's such a small part of the model, I just connected the gold material that comes with the Unreal Engine starter content. Okay, I think it's time to make something big. And by that I mean the big ass tower that's usually in view over here. For the material I used the same rock material as everywhere else, except I made a new instance and changed the tint and some of the texture scale. Since we're already in this area, I'd like to make the stairs now and this button holder as well as the door to the fairy cancel. Maybe the lamp since it's connected to the door. Um, actually, if we're going to make the lamp, let's also make these windows that come out of the fairy cancel. Okay, so you probably know the drill by now. Sculpt and ZBrush, drop it in Unreal. This one uses the same materials as the structure that we made in the first episode, so rocks and the tiles. You can even see the runtime virtual textures doing some work here as the bottom of the stairs is nicely blended with the sand. Okay, next one. And the next. So the materials on the door frame are nothing we haven't seen before. We have the rocks, tiles, and wood. However, the door itself has some new stuff. The metal is another tileable texture I made that uses the same material as the rocks and wood. And the door itself is a dedicated texture. So here's a tileable metal material. I decided to make it very dirty and messy to kind of reflect the crude technology that's in Rayman. And here's the door. These lamps are usually hanging from some kind of branch or root, so I made one of those too. This one also got its own dedicated texture. Okay, this is getting kind of cozy. For easy reusability, I combined the lamp model with the branch and a point light into a blueprint. Also, I made the lamp to not cast shadows because the point light is inside the lamp. For the window model, I just made the window frame because the window itself will be reused from the lamp texture. Just like that. I combined these windows with rectangular lights and gave them strong volumetric intensity to give it a nice 
gloomy feel. I'm actually still missing this button over here. I am no longer missing this button. I think there are two more models I'm missing at this point. One is the mushroom over here, and the other one are these entrance trees. Wee -woo. This one also got its own dedicated texture. I will be going more in depth into my texturing process, but I want to leave it for the Crab Ninja video because I think it just makes more sense to do it in a video that's dedicated to one model. And the Crab Ninja video will be the next video, so coming soon. So I put the mushrooms on the level in clumps, even though they were singular in the original game. It just seems to make more sense. And I complemented them with some point lights to give them some stronger glow. I got some over here too. To brighten up this little dark corner. And I put one in the back over here for the same reason, actually. So once I sculpted my tree in ZBrush, I dropped it into Blender to add in some leaves. The leaves use the same material as the foliage, I just added them to the Atlas. And here they are in Unreal. As always, the runtime virtual textures do wonders. Also, I think this translucency looks really nice. Now, while we're on the topic of nature, I think it's high time we put in some foliage. So, I'll just clap my hands and... Let me do a little flyby. I'm not really a fan of how bright the background is right now. So I'm going to put him in shadow by dropping these huge planes in the sky. Now back in the original, uh, there are also these kind of foggy clouds in the background that I would like to add. So for the fog, I actually bought William Faucher's Easy Fog asset for Unreal Engine. They look really nice and are super easy to use. So I definitely recommend them to anyone and Overall, I really recommend his channel. He has great stuff. So here we have the easy fog in action. I think it blends really nicely and really actually fits the style. One more thing that might be hard to notice. I put a fog card that's like flat on the ground over here. If I turn it off, you might be able to see it. The like these IRS get much darker. And once I unhide it, they kind of brighten them up. So it's kind of supposed to simulate all this fog that's gathering like in the cavities. Okay, I think we're almost done with today's video. One last thing to cover are the particle systems, like the one on the button over here. Uh, another thing is the shooting stars that come down behind the moons. I would also like to add that. And one bonus particle system I would like is some kind of fireflies that gather around light sources like those lamps over there in the distance or the windows. So let's start with the button particle system. So for the texture, I have this flare texture that I found online. And for the particle system it itself, I think I'll just go from top to bottom. So they get initialized on a cylinder. 
uh, here I have a color node where the alpha starts at zero and ends at zero, so they smoothly fade in and out of existence. And then for the swirling around, I use a vertex, a vortex force and the curl noise force to kind of give a little more randomness to the vortex force. And here they are in the scene. Okay, and for the fireflies, I made no changes to the sprite renderer. Uh, I initialized the particles on a sphere. I use scale here to kind of fade them in and out of existence, so they don't just disappear. A curl noise to give them some kind of erratic, random movement. And I point attraction force so they don't fly away and, and actually swirl around the light source. And here at the end I have a color force that gives them the emissive properties. I actually updated the lamp blueprints to contain the firefly effect in them. Okay, finally we have the shooting star. The star itself uses the same flare material that the button particles was using. And the trail behind the star is just a ribbon renderer that emits from the star particle. So here I have the spawn particles from other emitter. That's what solves that. Aside from that, I have a box slash plane that's like really big for the initialized location. So they get spawned at pretty random places that are pretty far apart. I then add some velocity that goes to the right and a bit down. So they kind of get their initial velocity already. But then they also go down through a gravity force. How about we make a little recap of what I've made so far. So for the models, I got nine different boulders slash islands, four rocks, one moon model, eight kind of miscellaneous models I would count so I count the tower the stairs the door frame and a door to the tower or the glow box blocker kind of thingy seven wood models so six planks and one pole uh, the lamp and the window model actually 30 foliage pieces so one tree uh, one branch for the lamp one mushroom model and 27 different little plants that I use for painting foliage and one terrain mesh, so that comes together to 62 different models. We also got three particle systems. For the materials that I made, I have six. Uh, one, the vertex paint curvature material, uh, and our runtime virtual texture source material for the terrain. The, the tile material, the material that I use for dedicated textures. One foliage material and one particle material for the flare texture. Let's also count up the texture sets. I got four dedicated texture sets, one for the mushroom, one for the glow box blocker, uh, one for the door and one for the lamp. I have six tileable textures. So for the tiles, for the rock, dirt, moss, metal and wood, and one texture atlas for the leaves. Combining all that together, we have this little scene in front of us. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. In the next one, I'm going to go over making the first enemy, the Crab Ninja. So if you're interested in that, you might want to subscribe. As always, if you had a good time, please like the video and see you next time. Bye-bye.